Hello and welcome to the latest week of What the Fuck Do You Want? And I've got a guest this week, it's not just me. I've managed to fucking rip him off Monster Hunter Rise for about 30 minutes. I have the one, the only, the Captain J Spaulding. Hello, you've been stalking me on uh, on Xbox. It's what I do. <laughs> Fair enough. At least someone's paying attention to me. So what's your Monster Hunter level now currently? Oh, fuck me. Um... I think I'm MR48, mm-hmm. and the, the Hunter rank, I don't know, 187 or something. Machine. It's like hours, but I'm, I'm, I'm having to play like maybe two or three missions a day and then fuck off to another game, <laughs> just because otherwise I'll be there for nine hours. Yeah, I did fall off it, but it was nice to have Monster Hunter come back onto big machines. Yeah, it's, it is nice, and Sunbreak, the reason I'm back on is Sunbreak released um at the end of no beginning of may i think mm-hmm. fuck it's only a month ago and i've already put in like an extra hundred hours it's all right it's not like anybody <laughs> knows i know so yeah i've been i've been playing that and revisiting hitman actually oh nice one yeah because um game pass has so like, i think late last year hitman did a thing where basically if you own and hitman mm-hmm. you have all the hitmen now like yeah. You can just play all of them, which is great because and I own you can two play of them. The third game, but it's yes. remastered like the first two before that. Yeah, yeah. So they remastered the third one. That I bought that when it came out on. It was the first one I bought on PS4. Mm-hmm. So I had one and two on Xbox, and then the other one on PS4, and I couldn't like cross populate it. Oh, of course, but yeah. now I can just play them all on Xbox which is great, and I forgot how much fun it is to just walk up to someone and like, make them drown in cake. There is nothing more refreshing than just a nice wee murder in the evening. Sometimes, right? Just an yeah. occasional garroting, or you can get really creative as well. Slap somebody with a big fish. <laughs> That's been done. <laughs> drown them in their own diarrhea as well, which is fun. Because you, you give them like a diuretic, so they either vomit or shit themselves, and then just walk in and drown them in the toilet. And, it's just, and sometimes it's even called insult to injury. It's like the, the <laughs> killing. And like, yeah, cool. I have to ask. Mm-hmm. You're doing okay. I am. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, unrelated to any conversation, I just wanted to check in. Yeah, I think I'm fine as far as I can tell. Yeah. Well, that's okay. I, I'm glad. It's a lot of animal murder and the human stuff I'm not too worried about. It's, yeah. Well, they deserve well, it. Yeah, but they're not real animals. They're monsters. They're fake. They're real to me. <laughs> when I see one walking down Wimbledon High Street, I'll be like, "Oh, sorry, sorry about all your brethren." But beyond that, like, yeah, no, if you're kitted head to toe in, in their bodies, yeah, yeah. If if it was Cat Hunter and I'm just covered in like the various parts of dead cats, you could be worried. That would be insane. Just walking down the road, go, all right, I did with, with like a cat's head on my face. You would technically be this generation's bin lady, yeah, exactly. cat bin lady, <laughs> yeah, just covered in bits of old cat. But that would be a problem. But like, I did yeah. have that that thought as well. I'm just like, I was playing it, and I was like, how many animals have I murdered for this game? It always surprised me because you get uh, PETA always mm-hmm. boycott popular games because the fucking went ape shit at Animal Crossing because you could fish in it. Yeah. And if you fish, you're a cunt. Yeah, the f- I'm, I have a confusing relationship with Peter because I'm a vegetarian for like mm-hmm. 20 plus years. And obviously, I should like them. Oh, yeah. But they murder a lot of animals because they don't believe that any animal should be domesticated. So they will collect cat, stray cats and dogs and just fucking euthanize them. So I have an issue with it. It's a bit yeah. complicated. Simple issues. Animals are better than people. Yes. I agree. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. But it, it gets a bit murky after that. Yeah, pet is, pet is a tricky one because mm. they would rather just kill domesticated animals than, like, I don't know, rehome them because they don't believe in, like, pets, which is just mental. And touch my cat and fucking rape Also, them. my cat's blind and deaf. If he was in the wild, he'd be fucking dead. Mm-hmm. I'm doing him a favour. And yet, still probably the boss of you. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Like, as we discussed just before coming on air, I had to feed them before doing this so that he didn't just <laughs> smash the computer up. Yeah, I had to feed mine to a little, as we found out, a Scottish wife wild cat so uh he's ah. got a set of pipes on him <laughs> yeah so. well mine's deaf and doesn't know he's loud and he fucking is do a little sly meow here oh no but he's he's fucked up into the bedroom luckily but like he is a you you hear him sometimes on um that fucking guy's podcast and he just mm-hmm. it's like someone screaming into the microphone he's so <laughs> loud and i live in a quiet area so at four in the morning when he's hungry it's not great i'm gonna be honest oh the baby next door is up again <laughs> yeah just ah! <laughs> that fucking baby's always crying. Like, yeah, sorry. Uh. They're not fucking feed it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not killing animals. Basically, just imaginary monsters. Oh yeah, that that was my roundabout question of checking in on you. And yeah, um, my mental health is mostly fine. You're not murdering anything in reality. Not recently, no. Uh, although I could see why a person would be tempted. Mm. 
in this day and age, oh, I've just put me in the House of Commons for four minutes. Just to get one of them cunts <laughs> in a guillotine choke would be so fun. I feel like that's trolley dash. The, the <laughs> Supermarket sweep. Supermarket sweep, but murdering pricks. <laughs> That'd be great. Just running up right, and down sunshine. the Right, sunshine. You've got four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be brilliant. Oh, that would be a, such a good game show. Would you give somebody like a selection of weapons before they went in? Or is it like you're creative? You have to go in there and kind of make your own no, I, I, Yeah, no, I think kind of like... Um, uh, what the fuck is that zombie game? The Capcom zombie game. Oh, Dead Rising. You like Dead Rising, right? So you just have a table full of just bits and pieces, and you just like, oh, there's a snooker ball, there's a sock, fucking sorted, <laughs> <laughs> and then off you go. A condom full of marbles. Go for it. I I could take out, I reckon, at least four or five people with that. Uh, what's his face? His hairpiece, uh, Fabricant. <laughs> just go like, grab his hairpiece and just strangle a bunch of cunts. It'd be brilliant. That that would be a game show I would watch, or at least a sketch show that I would watch. That would be brilliant, like Matt Berry oh. and fucking Matthew Holness. Just oh, if he narrated it. Oh, uh, Matt Matt Berry. I, I think we need to start a petition for Matt Berry to take over from David Attenborough when he died, because <laughs> they kind of did. I don't know if you ever saw it. They kind of did a thing um, written by Bob Mortimer where Matt Berry yeah, narrated so those that uh, show. pinkle it's... commie duck bastards. <laughs> <laughs> fucking brilliant, Jeff, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> oh, it's not Jeff. Dinty. It's so good. <laughs> but honestly, if no one, if you haven't seen this, they're little shorts. They're like, they're like five or ten minutes, but mm-hmm. it was on BBC. They're fucking hilarious. It's if essentially if Matt Berry was given the gig of David Attenborough, <laughs> and it is fucking brilliant. It really is. If it's Nari a fucking wolf. <laughs> The old stock footage they just had lying around the archives. and Here, yeah. talk over that. <laughs> exactly, yeah, it's so good. I do realise that the last couple of episodes of your show have been quite Matt Berry heavy, but what are you going to do? He's Can great. you fucking blame me? The man's a treasure. He is. He's he, like That whole, again, treading on old ground, that whole group is just ridiculous. Mm. That whole group of friends is just ridiculous. They're all amazing. <laughs> like the space group, but incredibly talented. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, most of the space group were too. That was the man, like... Late nineties, early two thousand British comedy is just mm. fucking amazing. Like Big Train is one of my favourite sketch shows of all time, and that's mostly like the spaced guys, but written by a rather unfortunate Irish man. It turns out at this point, sadly, yeah, like so much good comedy of the time. It's put a dark cloud over the legs of Father Ted, IT yeah. crowd, IT Black crowd, books. Black Books, like all of the shows I love. Was he the first series of Black Books? It's uh... yeah. It was better. I'm going to be honest. Apart from the Bill Bailey as Jesus episode, it did get better (laughs) after the end of the first series when Dylan just writ it himself. It just got better for me anyway. Uh, He just knew the character better, I think. Yeah, because it's him, isn't it? Yeah. It's just a grumpy, (laughs) smoking Irishman who's always pissed. And I was like, I love him. I love him so much. I want to be him. (sighs) Because everyone wants to be Dylan Moran, except for that period when he turned into me and got fat for a bit. I don't know if you remember that, because he was all like I the, the, the windswept, like charming Irishman. And then his next special came out, and it's like, oh, you've been on the biscuits. The last episode we had him on, I think, was the Shark Sights episode. Uh, McCullion, mm-hmm. that's been on the show. Just him. It, it's a cheap little version. Of Dylan Moran. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to check that one out. I don't think I've heard that one. Because Dylan Moran is just one of it's, my favourite fucking comics. You know, it's the most downloaded episode. Yeah, oh, you'll get an extra one. It'll be even more downloaded. Oh, sweet. What, you mean my last one isn't at the top of the fucking chart? I'm amazed. Believe it or not, aghast. boredom scored lower than shock sites. <laughs> I'm amazed and aghast. The only reason I'm back on is because you're looking for guests. Yeah, I've been on the prowl. <laughs> Scraping about. Oh, there's that cunt again. Please. It's, oh, fuck, I'm sick of him being in my messages. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you're only doing this to get me off a of smelly opinions for 10 minutes. <laughs> they need a break. <laughs> no, fucking Tory Potter. Uh, the Tory <laughs> party hasn't been able to sit down collectively for the last few months. Sorry, that is great. But you just created a great new book series, Tory Potter. <laughs> the conservative wizard who just walks around being a prick to everyone. Yes, everybody has to do it for him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Abracadam, rivers of shit. <laughs> Not even close to what we're meant to be talking about either. Yet. Yeah, Ten minutes the in. port, the Dementors. <laughs> yes, we are a bit late into the introduction. Yeah, sorry. 
Well, we get to the question. Well, you did say you've got some catching up to do. Oh, we did. I normally talk to people before an episode starts, and okay. we didn't get to do that this time, did we? No, we were on a bit of a time limit, so yeah. we didn't. So it's on, on air now. Oh, yeah, lovely catch-up. It was. It was It was A-list catch-up. It was gold mm. star material. Top 10 catch-ups. It's up there. <laughs> Captain Jay Spaulding, now that you're comfortable, you're warmed up, you're relaxed, I can see that glazed look in your eye. What the fuck do you want? What I want is an open world Discworld game. We've already done Discworld. It was our very first episode. How bollocks. I haven't gone that far back. Yeah. You could have told me this when I told you what you set me up, you bastard. Oh, that is not something I would ever do. Do you know who was the guest on the very first episode? Uh, was it filthy? It was filthy. Of course it was fucking filthy. You know why I know it was filthy? Because that because of you two cunts, I went out and bought the Audible version of Guards Guards, <laughs> which I've been listening to all day, which is fucking hilarious. But that's yeah, not why nice. I chose this subject. I did mention this about two months ago, and you stitched me right up. It's been known to happen. What can I say? Eh, that's fair. Fuck return visits, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so it's not just any Discworld game. I specifically have a vision in mind for it there's a couple of sort of templates that could be used but an open world discord game Mm -hmm. not following the books specifically but in the universe of not unlike hogwarts academy or even like in my my mind it's essentially a game like um thief or i was called viable or elder scrolls that kind of oh yeah that's what i'm kind of thinking like elder scrolls wise well we'll get into it for those that also didn't listen to the first episode when the editing was very (laughs) poor as the current episodes aren't actually excellent either but discworld long-running series fantastic set of books does have quite the varied world Mm -hmm. the world that is supported on a turtle by four elephants yep so we're talking Full disc, underside and all, you'd be able to I think so, it. yeah. Or even, because like, mm-hmm. there's expansions there. You could even do, like, um, like the Elder Scrolls Online, that kind of, or even Conan Chronicles, if you remember that game, mm-hmm. where it's the open world of that particular franchise, because there's so much to explore with Discworld. Yeah. There were, I think, 45 Discworld novels, which is a lot. Oh, easily, and... The, not not to mention few, the other stuff that's sort of periphery. Yeah, like young adult books. That, and, that, that sort of loosely tie in. I mean, Pratchett himself is probably 60 to 70 books in, but just Discworld mm-hmm. alone, I think, was 45 at last cut counting. And there's so yeah, much I was to trying to remember from. which Rising Steam was. Rising Steam, yeah. Rising anyway. Steam was Discworld. That was the Industrial Revolution bit, mm-hmm. which, again, that's what I mean. Like, you could even do it ages. Which is why it's so varied and so. Well, we've just found our fast travel system. The tree. Exactly, dream. right? Like halfway through the game, the steam engine gets invented. <laughs> and before that, it's like dragons or the luggage or whatever the fuck. Because there's so many varied things. I, I, the reason I think it should be open world and in the universe of rather than a, a kind of translation of a book is A, that's been done mm-hmm. and it was brilliant for its time. Yeah. But also, it gives you so many different options to explore. And why I think it should be like kind of Skyrim Elder Scrolls wise, you start in Ankh-Morpork Pork or London, because let's be honest, it is. <laughs> you start in Ankh-Morpork Pork or the cities of Ankh and Morpork, and then mm-hmm. you are a member of one of the guilds. That's how that's your initial thing. You can just be, pick one of the guilds. So you can be an assassin, a thief, you can be a wizard, like you can pick but you can still interchange and join on those stories. Mm -hmm. So as a thief or an assassin, you could still, as you progress, go and do the wizard stories. As you could in like Skyrim, if you remember, you could go and even if you wasn't one of the the thieves, you could become a thief or an assassin. Mm -hmm. And it would just give so much like open world gameplay and there's so much data to draw from from his work oh, big like time. it would never end as a game oh no i mean you've got your supernatural elements mm-hmm. it's always that even getting to the witches in their forest exactly yeah be an adventure by itself like you could become one of the like apprentices to nanny og and and, and granny <laughs> weatherwax like there's so many options there and it would just for me mm-hmm. i would never stop playing it no i'd just be there forever i'd be in that universe and you'd see me wither and die i couldn't picture it i mean to be fair i've got a lot of withering to do these days pandemic's (laughs) been a bastard i was 12 stone wet before but now here we are it's happened to us all sadly (laughs) yeah at least we have something to blame it on i mean i would have been this size regardless but now i had 
lockdown that ruined me. Yeah, hundred percent. I used to be a stallion of a man. Yeah, that was that's pretty much my excuse. It's nothing to do with the fact that I've <laughs> changed jo- jobs to a sedentary working from home position and I drink too much. It's because lockdown was a <laughs> bastard and I don't do jujitsu anymore. Yeah, see, man. That's it. That's the only reasons. My wee sambo club broke up, so I don't get me weekly cuddle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I'm so angry. Yeah, so it's lockdown is the reason, not six Great beers a night for fucking everything. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Did you ever play the South Park game, Stick of Truth, or its sequel? Yes, and they are fucking great. The fan service in those fucking games is something I'd like to see going forward. All the small references, you would not have a notion what they meant. Mm -hmm. Well, that was... So, just going back in time a little bit to the original games, that was what the Discworld games, and latterly Discworld Noir, which was kind of in... It's sort of what I'm aiming at, because Discworld Noir Mm -hmm. was connected, but not based on anything it was in the universe of yeah so it used some of the characters and the tropes of the disc world but it wasn't a disc much world better book. you have a character you're free reign over but you yeah can exactly meet all the characters you like it's what made master chief an interesting character because he was a faceless mm-hmm. characterless fucking killing machine so it could be whatever you wanted rinse wind is just rinse wind and he's great but you're yeah. limited yeah uh. I never liked Rincewind. I, I see, I did, but I always skipped the first two books. Oh, really? Our Color of Magic is still one of my favorites. I just, but not no, because of Rincewind. Feels Wind. like it's doing the foundation work, but badly. Yeah, I get that. Going back to a, a, a Discord conversation we we're having, it's it's kind of like Blackadder <laughs> series one that I've just started rewatching, and that's bad. Mm. And I remember it being bad, but I thought Blackadder is amazing, and it's this great show, so it must be yeah, good. You can and it isn't. <laughs> appreciate elements of it, but at the same time, yeah, especially when there's later books, you can yes spending your time on yeah so color of magic what i loved wasn't so much about rinse wind himself it was actually mm-hmm. what i loved was the which was obviously a reference to china which was the um kind of bureaucracy of i think it was kvatch or kvetch i'm not too sure i've never listened to audiobooks no so i've never heard sure it said out loud exactly yeah, but I've basically seen it written down where the um the, the i can't remember his name anymore and i should have probably polished up there's a there's a character that has glasses and a camera and is clearly meant to be an Asian stereotype, etc. Mm-hmm. And it seems to be China that it's based on, and just like the bureaucracy, which did 100% exist, where they were like, you were born into a class system of bureaucrats. Yeah. And I love that the way Terry Pratchett described it, like his prose is always just brilliant and sardonic. Mm-hmm. It's very much on the, on the same lines as, um, was it the Hitchhiker's Guide guy? It's that kind of writing when you're reading it, it seems effortless in a sense that a lot of thought has not been put into it. Yes. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah, no, it's 100%. so well structured. And he always, mm. like Pratchett in particular, but um, Douglas Adams is another one, mm-hmm. which is, yeah, that's the name, Douglas Adams. So it, it's almost like they're having a chat with you in the room when you're reading the book. It's very conversational. It seems yeah. it's very sardonic, which is very much my sense of humor, the sarcasm <laughs> and that kind of sly it's wink the of a nod. double entendre. So mm. many. And then sometimes you're reading a sentence thinking to yourself, was that a double entendre or have I just got somewhat perverse? Yeah, exactly. In my older age. So going back to, um, as, as a, another of your podcasts mentioned, the Guards Guards audio book, mm-hmm. obviously so many voice actors in that are brilliant. John Coulshaw is great. But you remember like all the, um, whenever the, there would be a particular sentence in the book that had a deeper meaning that Terry Pratchett wanted to convey, he'd have an asterisk mm-hmm. over it. So you... In the book, you would flip to the bottom of the page and the asterisk would be there and you'd read the explanation. <laughs> in the audio book, that's voiced by Bill Nighy. Mm-hmm. He, that's all he does is just all the asterisks. <laughs> and it's so sardonic. And he reads it as if he's reading a play. Yeah, And it's beautiful because it's just out of character. And he's like, So you would retain that role for him? It, yeah, oh, he's, yeah I'd, I would definitely have Bill Nighy in it. Mm-hmm. I would, given my choice, I'd have the original Discworld game cast as well because it was Eric Idle. Oh, yeah. Tony Robinson, mm. for all you Black Adder fans out there. <laughs> and what amazed me doing my research, because I didn't know, and he would have been a very young version of himself, Rob Brydon did most of the voices in both of Discworld, Discworld 2. So, and you get Coogan in, you get all those kind of what Matt Berry for fucking sure, <laughs> because how do you not, how do you not put that voice to work? Uh, how the fuck Matt Berry is going to be like the bingo card for this show? We'll yeah, I know, because he he's just amazing. But oh, like, you would time. definitely get his voice in there, because how do you not? He's got the most distinctive voice in British, <laughs> like, not even comedy, just like acting. and <laughs> Britain. Just in Britain, yeah. That, him and Brian Blessed, who would also be in the game and was. 
<laughs> he did play a voice in the original game, and and, and Nigel mm-hmm. playing like get the get fucking Aid Edmondson, just bring all the eighties guys in for my own, yeah, just for me, for no one else. I give a fuck about anyone else enjoying this game. <laughs> just spend millions and millions of pounds developing a game just for which me. character will I be? No, just come in. We'll find something for you. Yeah, we'll Don't worry. Out. <laughs> As Filthy mentioned about um, sometimes in the audiobooks, they don't. It's clear they haven't read the book because mm-hmm. they don't get the description and character. So the the kind of head wizard Matt Berry all day long. Yeah, I was going to say Filthy it, was complaining for anybody that didn't listen. The character in the books quite booming voice, very bellicose. Yeah, yeah. Whereas he's clearly Brian Bressed. A, yeah, he's clearly played as a feeling old stereotypical wizard. Where yeah, like a doddery have, old man. Yeah. We should, should have a it, bit of berry about him. Yeah, it's either berry or blessed. They're, they're your options. Mm-hmm. Or the now dead dude that did pie in the sky, that big old fat dude. But he's dead, oh, yeah. so you can't have him. We'll get that re-speecher technology in. Yeah, it's not going to be long, is it? No. I'm not entirely sure I'm even doing this podcast. You've got some AI No, I'm hoping I can fucking over 100 episodes now. I'm just putting them all in there and uh, the deadbeat punk voice and just write scripts because I'm far better the written... <laughs> It's either you or Terry Wogan. You're going to be doing fucking Eurovision next year. <laughs> well, look at this me. cunt. <laughs> look at the shape of this whore. <laughs> <laughs> Who thought that was a good... Fu- I don't know, Northern, I can't do Irish. <laughs> Who thought that was a good fucking outfit? Throughout the English said, Cunt! Wanker! <laughs> yeah. Fall off the stage, you prick, you! Honestly, I've never watched the Eurovision. That would drag me in. If you and just Graham Norton going at it like that, that would <laughs> be brilliant. A, when we were doing Phil's show, Ring Sting, somebody wrote in as an insult that I sounded like Terry Wogan. That soon became Sweary Wogan. And I was like, you've made my fucking year. You've yeah. tried to insult me, but now the superego is just up there. <laughs> I came up with Swerry Rogan independently after listening to you, and then I heard that anecdote. I was like, ah, fuck. Uh, he would have loved that if I told him. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a great, like, his dulcet tones. Just imagine. See his little happy Irish face afterwards. <laughs> Just, oh, and here's the Ukraine. Cunts. Expecting me to cry for them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck it up. Sorry, that was genuine. <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh. Um, yeah, so going back to um, an open world disc world game. Oh so, yes, as we were, <laughs> as we were. So yeah, the, so the previous um, disc world games were centered around a particular story. So the disc world one game was essentially the plot of Guards Guards, mm-hmm. where a shadowy cabal essentially summons a dragon to take over the city, so that they can bring about a new king and take over that way. Essentially. Um, what was done in England with uh, Charles II. Mm-hmm. It's the same bollocks. So, like, oh, he's the real king, but with a dragon, obviously. What which do didn't you see happen any fucking England. dragons about? Because Conti balls over there killed them all. <laughs> all of them. Just yeah. Stamped them on prick. <laughs> oh, wow. That's impressive for a man with no chin. <laughs> so that was the first game, essentially. And it was, it was a point and click adventure, as they all were. Mm-hmm. I don't think we need to revisit them. It would be great if you got like a remastered, like all three combination. That would be lovely. Just for they completionists. They were fucking but... hard. <laughs> yeah, they were I got ridiculous. Stuff. For anybody that's played it before, Octopus and Custard. I was going to exactly yeah. mention that, yeah. <laughs> Without a guide, I never would have fucking got that. No, nobody, nobody did. So <laughs> essentially, you have to get an octopus and some custard and then go into a swamp and get a frog mm-hmm. and then go back in time to basically see a guy and put the custard and the octopus in a toilet and then put some... Pr- so the back-in-time bit is so you can get some prunes <laughs> to put in a particular guy's drink. He then... Oh no, caviar, sorry. He then eats the caviar, gets the shits, and then gets attacked by the octopus in the toilet. And I'm not sure why, but it's brilliant. Yeah. And, it, and I you couldn't work this out, out by myself. No, that game took me about nine years to complete because <laughs> I didn't use a guide because it was 1995. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm old enough to have played it the first time round. None of that problem solving this time around. No. So there wouldn't be those ridiculous point and click logic puzzles that don't make any sense. Because some of them were genius. Some mm-hmm. were just ridiculous. That didn't make any sense. Th- that said, if you did work out a puzzle in those games by yourself, you just felt like a genius. Oh, the sense of achievement was mad. Yeah. It was It was like just insane how hard you got, essentially. Because I've done it. It didn't make any sense. I literally used I'm every a item. Fucking genius! Yeah, you just literally clicked on every item in your inventory on everything on the screen. I'm gonna design my own Discworld gear. Yeah, now. please. I'll, I'll fucking buy it. 
well, <laughs> the last time we did a podcast, I said I won the RoboCup game, and that's coming out next month. So, you know, let's be hopeful. <laughs> Bonus points if you shoot them in the dick. Oh, it has to be. I, oh, I hope the, so. But, um, so yeah, that was game one, not RoboCup. <laughs> so game game two was um, kind of a continuation of the Rinse Win story. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't actually remember that what that one was about because it's been ages and I didn't do the research, if I'm honest. But I remember like you had the same voiceover artists and like as a yeah, kid I had the same voice cast. I don't think I played the second one. It had Nigel Planer in it, which the first one didn't have. Basically, just being Neil from um, the young ones. Like it's the same voice. Mm, okay. Quite the role. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, he's typecast. When and then, I was looking yes. this up, I came across the Discworld MUD which uh, is like a text-based MMORPG. Okay. Started in 1991, still on the fucking go to now. Fucking hell. Yeah, that's good shelf life. So that's like a crowdsource game, I'm guessing. Pretty much, yeah. Essentially, yeah. It's like fanfic, yeah. basically. To go that long, and then I think the last update was two years ago where they added Fool's Guilds for April Fool's Day. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, that's a little rabbit hole I could get lost in, you know, See, because I don't have enough games to play. Yeah, no, I've got time to spare, but that... But AAA. That's Stick what I mean. Stick that through the Bethesda engine, please. Yeah, just throw it in there and see what comes out. Just imagine how good that would fucking be. And how many Desperate hours you New would Vegas. lose. Mm. <laughs> it could work. <laughs> it could absolutely work. Veterinary as Mr. House. <laughs> also, Veterinary is one of the greatest characters ever created. Without a doubt. For me. Like, there's so many good ones. Death, obviously, is brilliant. But Veterinary is just perfect as this, like, cunning... Death is brilliant because even if you die in the game it's fucking more interaction with that it's exactly so you die you get killed and he turns up mm-hmm. oh we're doing this again are we and it's just that's the re, re- like the rebirth model even when he brilliant. popped up at various stages in the first game oh well sorry it wasn't the first game there was a text based one for the commodore Oof. don't yeah. write in an email <laughs> <laughs> the second one uh Discworld, various situations quite dangerous Death would come up and just kind of mm-hmm. check in on you. Yeah, like tap you on the shoulder or shit. That, 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 yeah. There's so much opening for humour within that <laughs> universe. So that's that's the thing that's beautiful. Like, imagine you do like a big battle scene, mm-hmm. like one of those fucking um, Dynasty Warriors type. Oh, yeah. You could just throw that in, like there's a big battle scene, and you just see Death in the background wandering about, picking people <laughs> up and go, come on. It'd be great. There's so many little nods. I've never seen a skull them. sweat before. Yeah, exactly. It just, I, I honestly, I think fuck Hogwarts Academy, like fuck J.K. Rowling. <laughs> She's done twelve books. Get fucked. This girl would just keep feeding. Never have the two in the same sentence again. Yeah. You'll be barred from future appearances. Yeah, true. But also, no one's going to be upset about Terry Pratchett. There oh, are no God. communities. He's upset. Like he's just the perfect granddad. Well, I mean, the worst you're going to get is people shouting. You know, you can't write for him. But if you're not basing it on any of his creations. No, that, that, uh, that's the other among thing. Among yeah. his creations, yeah. Because the one thing I've noticed about all the audiobooks, TV shows, whatever that have been made of Discworld, no one is ever going to be fucking happy. Oh, no. They're just not. Because you're not Terry Pratchett. No one will ever be Terry Pratchett. Mm. It's not going to happen. But if you play in the sandbox of the universe rather than a specific thing, mm-hmm. then I think it could work. Because there's so many ways you could do it. And his daughter's a fucking game designer. Like, get her involved. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't hire her for this project. <laughs> <laughs> like she, I mean, it makes sense though. It would, but uh, she's tried and failed. Yeah, unfortunately, a few times. It, it's just a weird thing that this property exists and no one's done anything with it since like '98. Mm-hmm. Like no games, no like you get shitty TV shows, but that's kind of it. And it's just like the Guards TV show that came out Fuck's a couple sick. years back, yeah, which was bad. Punch everyone involved. <laughs> Great cast, but terrible. The notes I had was like mm-hmm. Disco Elysium with Sam Vimes. I had Sim City as you playing as Fedenari. I, I <laughs> think everybody just sees guards, guards every time I come up with something. A Pokemon ripoff with a young lady Sybil. Yeah, a hundred percent. That would right, work so much. On. She's just breeding dragons. Oh yeah, as Pokemon, it would work a hundred percent. There's so many options and shoot offs that you could do with that franchise <laughs> that no one has done, and I don't get it. Fucking The Witcher got a card game. As a oh, spin off, fuck yeah. for fuck's sake. And it was great. But. <laughs> that fucking spin off. But it was brilliant. I mean, it was brilliant. But <laughs> no one's touched Discworld in nearly 30 years, and it's madness. Just touch I... my Discworld. <laughs> well, will we start wrapping up? Yeah, I reckon so. Um, 
so yeah, that was the idea. Generally, I'd like a Discworld. Anything, I'd, ideally, like Terry Pratchett to still be alive and not dead because of my Alzheimer's, because that sucked. But definitely, if I had that fucking power, that shit would fucking exist. That wasn't an option. You didn't send me that. What do you want? Uh, Terry Pratchett still alive? Now nah, I get fucked. I'm quite saddened that it only came up now at the very end as an afterthought. Yeah, I mean, well, it goes without saying, but if I knew you had that power, I'd probably. Oh yeah, a lot. you get Rowling, we sacrifice her. I'll get you Pratchett. Uh, how do I get Hitchens back? How do I do that? <laughs> I want him. No, not the shit brother, the good one. Oh, it'd be even better because Pratchett would fucking haunt her body. She'd be possessed. And she'd fucking hate that. A man trapped inside a woman's body. <laughs> oh, the irony. Also, she'd be a better writer overnight, which would just be great. Well, as always, it's been an absolute delight. And for me. Glad to hear it. But until next time, I'm afraid. Nil points. Get fucked. Get <laughs> fucked.